Welcome back everyone. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to spawn objects. Okay. So in order to, to spawn an object we need something to spawn. So I double click the background and I'm going to go to add a sprite. I'm going to click this outside then I'm going to add my image. You can add any image you want. And I'm going to close it and then you see it comes out there. Now I'm also going to rename this and I'm going to call this projectile. Simple enough, right? Alright, now we need to learn how to spawn this. So, the reason why you put this outside is that when you spawn an object, or create an object, a new game object, the object has to be outside of the playing field because you can't just create an object, you have to create an instance of that object. So, it's outside right here, and then what's going to happen is that I'm going to spawn something out of this mammoth. Okay, so, we're going to go to my event sheet, and then I see I have keyboard is down. If you do, and if you don't know how to do that, you go add event, keyboard, and key uh, Z is down, or Z. Um, and then I'm going to, in order to spawn a projectile, it's kind of weird actually. You have to go to mammoth, and then spawn another object, and then you go projectile. And then you can choose the layer, and you can also choose the image point. Alright, we're going um, to, I'll show you how to do that in a second here. So, we do that, and every time we push Z, or Z, uh, we'll just uh, spawn it. Now, as you can see, I had to move around my mammoth to actually get those spawns. Alright, so that's kind of a problem. And second of all, I've had this over from a, another tutorial, and I'm just going to actually delete these all together. So just right click delete. All right, now I just got rid of the functionality, so I'm going to have to put in something new here. So I believe I've already added it in, but what you have to do is you go to <coughs> edit behaviors, and then you click this green plus sign, and you go add eight directions. And that way, the mammoth can move. Okay. Okay. Um, now, since the projectile is just basically what it, w what we've told it to do is create one of these every time you push that. And basically, that's what's happening. So, if you do this, you push Z. Look at that. And actually you can see there's two problems, which is kind of funny actually. There are two problems. One, it creates it, right? And two, it doesn't, uh, it creates more than one. As you can see these streaks here, they're more than one. So, there's two problems with that. So let's go over to our projectile. We have to add uh, behavior to that. Okay, so we're going to go edit behavior, click the, click the green plus, and we're going to add the bullet behavior to it. Okay, the bullet behavior is quite simple actually. We have the speed, the acceleration, the gravity, and the bounce off of solid objects, and then set angle. And we can set the angle, so if we push yes, then we can set the angle to that. Anyway, so now what's going to happen is that when we run this game, you can see, it basically, oh that's cool, that's really neat, it's kind of neat actually. So as you can see this game is, while I'm holding down uh, Z, it's just spawning as many projectiles as I want. Now, this is actually really cool, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this quite a bit. And I didn't plan for this actually. This, uh, but, um, but sometimes when you make a mistake, it actually ends up being advantageous. So that's kind of cool. But the problem is, is that when you play a game, you don't actually spawn as as many projectiles as you possibly can. So what we have to do instead is set that to a timer. So it's quite simple. We go back to our event sheet, and we can add different conditions. Okay. So I'm going to show you how that works. Is basically if you you can. The, I'll, I'll give you an example and then I'll show you what we're going to actually do. So we're going to go keyboard and then let's say if you want 
the Z key and the, let's say, C key to go down. So, um, basically, I'm just pushing C there. Then it will spawn the projectile. So if I run it, if I push Z, nothing happens. But I push Z and C, then something will happen. Okay. So that's the main concept behind it. But we're not going to do that. So we're going to go right-click, delete. Then we're going to double-click it again. And what we have to do is we have to go into system. Okay. And every X seconds. So there's a lot of um, a lot of values in here. Just go every X second, and then every one second. Okay. So that means when Z is down, in every one second you're going to spawn a projectile. So let's go back. And so I can push this the Z button as much as I want, but as you can see, it's only one projectile. One second. So I'm not sure if you can hear me pushing it down, but I'm pushing it down as fast as I can. In fact, I'm using two fingers. But no, it's only going to spawn it every once. And if you hold it down, that's what happens, right? Every one second. Now you can play around with that. You can make it every point or um, 0 0.3 seconds, right? And if we run that, there we go. And then I can move around. And what's interesting about this is that, um, as you can see, as I'm moving around, the angle of the of the bullet is the angle of the mammoth. So if you were to, to code a game, but from scratch, this is actually really hard. Or I shouldn't say really hard, but it's much harder to do than what what I've shown you here. So this is why I like using Construct 2 is because all of this the stuff that you'd have to normally code by by hand is just taken care of for you. So now that we have that, um, basically that is how you spawn objects, and that's how you spawn bullets in Construct 2. Alright, thank you very much.